Welcome to the Magenta Otter Travel Series. They don't speak American in Britain. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do hit the subscribe button as well as the bell so that you're alerted when new videos come out. Today's installment is words that Americans should know when traveling in the UK. We're going to cover a lot of territory today. The first group of words are just general travel words that are good to know. And the first one is holiday. That is what Brits call going on vacation. So if someone says, I'm going to be on holiday for a fortnight, that means they're going on vacation for two weeks. Another word that's really good to know, especially when you're buying tickets, is return. That means round trip. So if you're going from London to Paris and you're buying a ticket, and they're asked, do you want a one-way or return ticket? They're asking, do you want a one-way or round trip? The other word is economy. So I think we're familiar in the US with calling coach class either coach or economy, but in the UK, it's only referred to as economy, not coach. And the other one, I hesitate to even say this one because I think most people know this, but just good to know as a reminder that lift means elevator so if you're getting directions somewhere if they say take the lift to the first floor that means get on the elevator and go from the ground floor up to what we would call the second floor because in the uk the second floor is called the first floor at least the ground floor is called the ground floor in both places but that's good to know when counting floors that uh, that they don't count in the same way that we do next one is post so we go to a post office to mail a letter but they wouldn't say that in the uk they would say post a letter have you checked the post today instead of have you checked the mail so if you need to mail something just say where can i go to post this letter uh, another term that is different in the us and uk is stag do or hen do so if you see a bunch of gals running around town, one of them's got a big sash on it that says bride, that is a hen do. That is a bachelorette party. And a stag do would be a bachelor party. Now for some shopping terms. It is not called a cash register in the UK. It is called a till. So if you wanna know where to pay for something in a store, you would say, where is the till? If you see a store that's called an off-license store, that is a liquor store. And if you go to a liquor store, expect to be ID'd, which is what they call being carded. Now for words relating to cars or driving. The first one is postcode. When you use a GPS system and you are trying to figure out where to navigate to in Britain, uh, they don't use the term zip code there, they use postcode. And the postcodes are really much more specific than they are here. A zip code in the US covers quite a lot of homes and streets, uh, kind of a big chunk of geography. Whereas in the UK, postcodes are very, very specific. So if you put in a postcode, it's gonna direct you exactly to where you are going. Motorway is the term that they use for highways. Uh, and then parts of a car, you probably already know this, but boot is the trunk of a car, uh, and then the hood of a car is called bonnet. The windscreen is what they call the windshield of a car in Britain, and indicator is what they call the turn signal. So you've probably also heard it called the indicator, but they do not use the term turn signal. All right, a couple camping terms. This one is actually more general than just camping, but I thought I would throw it in this group. It's the word torch. Now, when an American hears the word torch, they think of a wooden stick with a ball of fire on the top or a tiki torch or something. But torch in the UK just means flashlight. Very commonly used word that is just so different than what we think of here in the US. A caravan is a camper or RV. Uh, that we would call here in the US. They don't use the term RV in the UK, so uh, it's either a camper van or a caravan. And then um, other forms of transportation words. 
Um, the underground or tube is what they call the subway. So if you're in London and you're riding the subway, you would be riding the London Underground and you would want to know what tube stop to get off at. Uh, they don't use the word pitcher, they use the word jug. And a good tip to know when traveling in Britain, especially if you're at a pub, but also I've done this at nicer restaurants all the time. Um, if you drink a lot of water like the Sandlands do and want to stay hydrated, go ahead and ask for a jug of water when you sit down because their water glasses are pretty small. Certainly by Texas standards, those are small water glasses. So it's nice to just get a pitcher of water and they're happy to provide that and you would just call it a jug of water. The next word is grilled. And this is kind of funny to me because we use the exact same word but it means something totally different. In the UK, grilled means broiled. So here in the US, we have grilled cheese sandwiches where we take bread and put cheese in between, butter the bread and fry it on both sides and that is a grilled cheese sandwich. In the UK, if you ask for grilled cheese, they would put cheese under a broiler. Um, and grilled cheese sandwiches in the UK are actually called toasties. I would know that because I love cheese, especially melted cheese. A coach is a bus. So if you see a big tour bus taking tourists around, that would be referred to as a coach. And a lorry is not a cute little bird, it is a truck. So that is the common word used for trucks. All right, now for my favorite thing, restaurants and food. Um, if you are at a restaurant where you want to order something to take away, it is called takeaway, not take out or carry out. Those words are not used and I've tried it, it just confuses people. So just say that you are looking for a takeaway fish and chip shop or a takeaway Chinese shop and then people will know what you're talking about. Uh, all right, I've got lots of other food words that I can talk about, but I've done a whole separate video on that, which are food words that uh, can be confusing to Americans, so be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. All right, now to talk about some words that refer to things that you might encounter in a hotel or Airbnb. A flat is what they would call an apartment or condo. And then this one's kind of funny. When someone says garden, they're not talking about rows of vegetables planted in the backyard. It is the yard itself. So a house has a front garden and a back garden. That is the terms they use for the yard. Uh, another subtle difference is with trash. So the word rubbish is used more often there. Um, we would say trash or garbage. They um, would say rubbish. And what you put it in is a bin. Also, this is a little bit more of an old fashioned term, but you'll still hear it, uh, dustbin. So if someone says, dustbin or bin, they're referring to the trash can. Now for kitchen supplies and bathroom supplies, toilet roll or loo roll is what they call toilet paper. And if someone says there's a kitchen roll underneath the sink, they're referring to paper towels. Um, the tap is what they call a faucet. They don't really use the word faucet, so whether it's kitchen or bathroom, uh, you would say tap. A dressing gown is what they would call a bathrobe in the UK. And this is my favorite one. If you're reading reviews on TripAdvisor for a wonderful B&B &B or place to stay and they describe it as being homely, they are not criticizing it. Homely is a negative word in the US that we usually uh, think of being referred to a person as being homely and that means ugly. Whereas in the UK, homely means exactly the opposite. It's a positive word, meaning a place that's really cozy and just like home. So homely is a nice thing to say in Britain when referring to a place to stay. A few more words now having to do with apparel. Waistcoat is not a term we really use in the US, but that's what we call a man's vest. And pants 
That word is in my words not to say when traveling in the UK because pants means underwear. So that's very, very confusing because as Americans, we talk about pants all the time, referring to jeans or slacks. And that is has caused a lot of chuckles because in the UK, it means underwear. Trainers, those are not personal trainers. Trainers in the UK are sneakers. So if you're in a laundrette, which is what they call a laundromat, and you see a sign that says, no trainers in the washing machine, it doesn't mean don't take a personal trainer and throw them in the washing machine. It says, don't put your sneakers in the washing machine. And another term is jumper. It took me a while to understand exactly what they were referring to because it seems to be used for a lot of words. Sweaters or sweatshirts um, are all kind of called jumpers, not a term we use here. And hopefully you won't need to seek medical attention while you're traveling in the UK, but if you did, or even if you just wanted to get some Tylenol, um, you would need to go to a chemist. So the drugstore or pharmacy is called the chemist and the pharmacist is called a chemist. So just a term to know if you need to look for a place to buy some band-aids, which are also something that they describe differently. If you need an adhesive bandage, that is called a plaster. Oh, that is a bunch of words that hopefully will help you in knowing what's going on when you are traveling in Britain. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.